What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate. Reverse Ranch, no hate. Now, Adrian Broner supposed to be making his return. And it says, the 140-pound cash cow returns. Now, not to take anything from Adrian Broner because he is a good fighter. And Adrian Broner is one of the guys that whenever he fights... Whoever he fights, I want to see Adrian Broner win. Okay. But there's a couple things that come to mind. One. At 140 pounds, he should have as less of a difficult time with any of these challenges. Because, in all honesty, the 140 pound division is not deep. It's, it's not deep. You know, no more Mikey Garcia, no more Terrence Crawford. Um, there's names there that I can name is not even necessary because, like I said, there's no, there's no superstar power there. Um, if we look at Adrian Broner and what he's done, we know he came from 130 pounds all the way up to 147, but that was his choice. And when he was even asked, I, rem I remember before he before he fought Paulie Malignaggi, he was asked. Are you concerned at all about, you know, Paulie being the bigger, naturally bigger guy, you know, the heavier guy? And he goes, what's weight? I mean, and, you know, I know people are saying that, well, you know, Adrian is really not a, a, a actual um, welterweight or junior, or, or junior welterweight. Well, Floyd and Manny Pacquiao, Ferrero Duran, there's, there's several people. I mean, uh, 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 um, Juan Manuel Marquez, there's, there's several guys. That we can name that came from lightweight and went up to 147. And still won championships. Still was beating top guys. So, I mean, the only thing that, that we can get out of that is, well, Adrian is obviously not as good as those guys. It's because to make the excuses about the weight, no. Especially when you went up. Look, when you go up and win. You have guys like, I remember Pernell Whitaker went up, he fought Julio Cesar Vasquez at 154, and he won that title. Okay, you can go look this up, and I remember, you know, Pernell Whitaker versus Julio Cesar Vasquez, and if they have it all the way up to the end, to the interview, watch what happens when Larry Merchant or whoever asks him, so are you going to fight terrible Terry Norris? Look at his face when he goes, no. Like, as if, are you crazy? No, I'm not fighting Terry Norris. Okay. Um, not that I think he was scared of Terry. But fighting Terry at 154 would have been suicide, man. And Pernell was a great fighter, so was Terry. When at 154 especially, I mean, at any weight, I think T Terry was just that guy, man. But that's another story. But anyway, Pernell Whitaker, he, he wanted a one-time deal. That was his account. I wanted to accomplish winning the title at 154. You know, Roy Jones went up to get the heavyweight title. And he said the only fight that he wanted, other than the Ruiz fight to get a championship, was with Mike Tyson. For the star power, the name, and with the draw, the draw that, it, that it would have been. That didn't happen, but that's a different thing. Is when somebody goes up, um, okay, like Pinnell, he won, but he didn't continue to, to stay at that at that weight class. You know, Sugar Ray Leonard, same thing. Him going up to fight Don, Donnie Lalonde at 168, which was a catch. It was actually, well, it was a catch weight because Donnie Lalonde was the light heavyweight champion. And he didn't stay up there. It was an accomplishment. Okay, let me drop back down. Fight at a small weight. Adrian Broner, on the other hand, um, you know, for people that saying, well, he, he he's naturally 130. Yeah, okay, well, one thing, no, he's not naturally 130. He fights at 130. He was fighting at 130. Broner is a big dude, man. Broner goes up to like 160 pounds. He's, he's, he's 60. So he, the, the guy's, he got a, he's, he got, he's a big ass head. You look at Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner is not a small frame guy. Just like Sean Porter is naturally bigger than the weight. Most most guys, most most fighters are, are, are bigger than the weight that they fight at. So his, his best performances might have been at 130, but I don't really think it has nothing to do with that because you know where... Okay, these guys are bigger, stronger. I need to be on my A game with my boxing skills. 
Bro, you got Floyd Mayweather in your corner training you, giving you pointers and showing you what to do. Um, I mean, like, Adrian Broner doesn't listen to his corner. I've seen the videos where his, his trainer saying, Adrian, you got to let your hands go, man. I, I, I think with Adrian, even when he fought Paulie Malignaggi, he fought pretty cautiously. He clearly won the fight, but it wasn't like a dominating ass kicking. Like, we imagine him doing to Paulie similar to what Sean, what Sean Porter did to Paulie Malignaggi, and, and that's not what happened. He was very, very, very cautious. Very cautious. And Paulie has no power. Um, and then when he went there against a guy like Marcos Maidana, um, a lot of us felt like maybe it was a bad night. I don't know, but he got his ass kicked um, tonight. And we saw against Sean Porter and different, but he doesn't, We one thing we learned, he doesn't like pressure. Somewhere in there, I don't feel like he lost his heart, like he's scared of guys. But I feel like he what he doesn't have the same heart to go in there and step up to do what it takes to win a fight. Okay. It's one thing when what, what you're doing is not working. You try something else. That's not working. You try something else. Adrian just basically plays it safe. We saw that against Mikey. We saw that against uh, 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 Pacquiao. We saw that against um, Sean Porter. Like all of his losses. Every, every you know. My the Madonna fight, he actually was trying to fight back to win. He was he was trying against Madonna. And it's like from that fight on, every time he has a top tier fighter, he doesn't he doesn't he's not a switch hitter. He doesn't know how to switch up style, switch up even I mean, I'm not saying if he goes south for that he will win, but I mean I don't know. He just he doesn't have that Floyd Mayweather mindset. He doesn't have he, he imitates Floyd, but he doesn't have that mindset. He doesn't have the ability. Like, for example, you know, people, oh, he does the shoulder roll. Well, he doesn't do it effectively like Floyd. First off, if you watch Adrian, he goes back on the straight line. He has no, he, he doesn't really have footwork. Adrian's flat-footed. He doesn't have footwork. Adrian's flat-footed. His, uh, his moving away is just to get out of the way of harm's way, but not to move, to give angles, be able to throw shots, set traps. He just moves out the way. When he hits the ropes, he doesn't slide, move, go, counter. You know, he, he just basically goes back, goes back. So he's either all offense or all defensive mode and occasionally throw a, a jab. Because he's like, huh, 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 huh. He'll throw that one, too. He doesn't throw combinations. He doesn't do any of that anymore. Even when he went, when he got beat at 147. Remember, he went back to 140 and said, I'm still undefeated at 140. That's when he said he feels like he's being disrespected. The fact that people think Mikey Garcia is going to beat him. And I'm saying, Adrian, the reason why we all think you're going to lose is because of what we've seen you do in the past. Like, like in the past. You know, in the recent past. So we, we, you know, I'm not excited. I don't know how to feel. I hope he wins. And what I believe he's going to do is fight a couple of meatballs. Um, because, well, that, that's apparent. Because if it was a mega fight, if it was a big fight, it would be announced as Adrian Broner versus such and such. The only thing we've heard is that he's making a return. Remember the demands for $10 million? Like, no, there's no demand for Adrian Broner. Nobody's going to give you $10 million, man. It depends on who you're fighting. And to be honest with you, if he's to fight a Sean Porter or a Keith Thurman or Errol Spence or a Terrence Crawford, he would be the B-side. So if they're giving you $10 million, then they have to be giving those guys 20 You understand what I mean? Like, no. There's, there's, there's no, I mean, he's in a, he's a three-time world champion and that's what he always brings up. And it's like, okay, but the more you keep saying that and the older you get, you're getting far, further and further away from reality that that's what you've done in the past. Okay. And nobody can take that, but going forward for there to be a demand for what you're doing, you can't keep losing big fights and then saying, but I'm a three-time world champion. And I came from water and cornflakes, you know, we, we get all of that. We know. What we want to see Adrian do is win. And Adrian Broner needs to show his slit. Listen, you guys know Floyd has power. He's not, a, he's not a devastating puncher. But Floyd, there's many guys that Floyd fought that were way stronger, like hit, hit harder. And Floyd just looks so comfortable in there against these guys. He make them miss, make them pay. Box, you know, set traps, do what he has to do to win the fight. 
Whereas Adrian, he he doesn't. He just basically he he, he does enough to not get knocked out. But it's like he's not trying to win. But he's you know what I'm saying. He's trying. He's 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 not doing anything effective. That's what we've seen. He he just he tries to. It's not he's not trying to win, but he's trying to to to, to just not get hit, not get knocked out. And when you watch him fight, it's like you can see like yeah, he he just doesn't have it. He just does not have that killer instinct to go out there and get you the fuck up out of it. He just does not have it. He does not have that. So now, what can happen is he come back against some meatballs, look good against them, and people say Adrian Broner is back. Maybe he can show some, you know, some, some, I don't know, some new additions to, to whatever he's learned and, 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 and look good, and then they build him up against to fight, you know, a big name. Now at 140, it's not a deep. It's, it's like he's a, he's a, he he at 140 can be a big fish in a small pond. Okay, for him, just like Crawford unified the division and moved up, they leave and go to the divisions where the bigger names are. So you know he's choosing to fight at 140, fine, but he needs to win these fights and he needs to look good doing it. But what you can't do is win, and then anybody can get it. Anybody can get it, unless they're willing to go down to one, 140, or come up, you know, from 135 to 140. So if he feels comfortable, they're fine. But look at that. Like I said, no more Mikey Garcia. No more. No more. Um. No more. Um. What's his name? Uh. 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 uh Terrence Crawford. Now, where it is, Devin Haney's supposed to be going up. Now, maybe that will be the fight that we'll get at 140. Because really, out of the names that's there, Devin Haney is really the only guy, in all honesty, that has a, 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 a you know, he, he, he still, feel like this, we know Devin Haney's dangerous. And to be honest with you, if Devin Haney fights Adrian Broner, I believe Adrian Broner gets beat by Devin Haney. I think, I think Devin Haney beats him up badly. Um... I just don't think Broner can beat A plus, B plus fighters. I think he can beat a C plus, B minus, B minus maybe. I Broner's just not that guy anymore, man. Now hopefully he can get things on track, and he can he can he can you know build up wins, get these victories, and then you know because I like to see Adrian Broner win. I'm just being real. I'm not going to sit up and lie and make excuses for him. I, I like to see Adrian Broner win, man. I like to see Devin Haney win. And if it's true that he's going to go up to 140, you know, then, hey, to see those two fight, that will be the fight of that division. But we'll have to see. You know, let's not forget, Adrian Broner was talking about if he doesn't get $10 million, tell him he's going back into rap. No, he said, I, I retired from boxing. Remember, I'm now... I'm going into rap and all this. He's going to go platinum. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. Tell me he's going to rob people, all, people, all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that he's he's going through it right now. His mind is, you know, he's he's in, he's in his feelings right now. And all of a sudden, now he's back. So I'm not shocked. The thing that Adrian Broner has to stop doing is wasting precious time. Man, you're only getting older. I mean. You know, every fighter doesn't start to fade the exact same time, man. So, um, I don't know what he's going to be looking like. We'll have to see. And like I said, hopefully he can get back to winning, looking good, and not just beating guys only because they're not, you know, he's in a, he's in a weak talent pool. But at the same time, it's like it is what it is with that. But as far as beating C-level fighters, B-minus fighters, and then, you know, you know, speaking out as if you're ready, for, you know, you'll fight any A-level fighter when there's none there. That's what he doesn't need. You know, um, when you talk, you talk, you talk, you have to back that up. And what I'm seeing right now, you know, you know, more recently from Adrian Broner is that all, like I said, all of his top, all of, all of his big fights, his he loses them. And we can't, oh, it's because he, he, he's not fighting at 130 anymore. Look, he's not fighting at 135 now. He's or 130 now. He's fighting at 140. You know, Adrian Broner, is, 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 his body has grown. He's 30 now, 30, 31. His, his body's grown into that, a bigger weight. 
So at some point, yeah, you have to move up. You know, if J Javante Tank Davis was to go up to 140, then what? What if he goes to 140? Because I honestly, I think Tank will be. I think Tank and Devin Haney both would beat Adrian Broner. Um, Adrian Broner just does not. He lacks killer instinct, and he does not have the boxing IQ to adjust, readjust, take control of the fight, the ring general shit. He just does not have that. So, like I said, if the only way you can display that is by fighting lesser opposition, then what? I mean, how? How how much credibility, you know, is there in, in to being a champion when we know that a guy can't beat A level fighters? So just just giving my, my, my thoughts on that. Um I hope he wins. I hope he gets back to winning and I hope he does become champion again. And in doing so, you know, it's it, you have to give the man credit for becoming a champion again if he does. But like I said, it's all who you fighting as well. Um, I'm pretty sure, um, you know, like Anthony Joshua says, beating Charles Martin, it was mostly, basically, he, he only really took that fight because Charles Martin had the IBF title. But his real win, his real that satisfying feeling was when he beat Klitschko. There's a difference between the two, you understand what I'm saying? So... If he would have beat Charles Martin and then, you know, he didn't brag in any scenario. He just said it was the, that was the most satisfied feeling of now I feel like a world champion after beating Klitschko. You know, if he would have been bragging about beating Charles Martin, you know, people would have felt like, who the hell is Charles Martin anyway? I mean, you understand what I'm saying? So this is, this is what I mean. If you beat lesser opposition, and don't get me wrong, Charles Martin was the champ, so hey. But I'm just saying, if you're beating lesser opposition... And then, because Adrian loves saying, anybody can get it. Anybody can get it. Okay, but you left the deep pool at 147 to go down to 140. Like I said, where you're a big fish in a small pond. And let's not, you know, forget, he can get upset. There can be someone that doesn't have a big name, but the upset can happen. So, he said he was undefeated. At, you, know, at, 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 you know, the one thing, every loss that Adrian had, he did make an excuse for it. Now, with the Madonna fight, it wasn't really an excuse. He just said things like it made, you know, it opened his eyes. That loss showed who his true friends was and things like that. And, you know, that loss was the best thing that could happen to him. And I believe it was just a psychological job to make himself feel better about losing. A lot of people do that. And, you know, when he lost to Sean Porter, it was another excuse. You understand what I'm saying? And, and I'm tired of fighting these big guys. Nobody made you go up to 147. What do you mean you're tired of fighting these big guys? You chose to go to 147. You know, you, you talk like it was going to be easy work. And to be honest with you, most people thought it was going to beat Sean Porter. Most people. Because the skill set that we saw, and this is what I'm saying, what people got to understand, the skill set that you see against certain fighters, that's where he is. Certain guys he can fight and look amazing. And he couldn't handle pressure. He does not like he doesn't like it. Especially if a guy can punch. And basically, he lost. And you know, he, he made more excuses now. He made up excuses after he lost to Sean Porter. He's fighting these big guys, man, this and this. I'm going right down to 140. Then he says, I'm undefeated at 140. Remember that. And I, I feel disrespected, and, 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 and Mikey beat him easily. And then he said Mikey didn't want to fight. Mikey wanted to run, and Adrian didn't run. He fought on the back foot all night, though. So he was the one in retreat mode, not, you know, backing up, not, not Mikey. So it was like, you know, Adrian, what are you talking about? Then he lost after he called Pacquiao old man and everything. He got beat by Pacquiao, and then said, I beat that boy. And again, came up with the water and cornflakes. It's like, come on, man, Adrian, you lost. And the same thing we say about any other fighter. If you can't accept the fact that you lost, you will not get better. Because instead of saying, you know what, let me watch this fight and study. What am I doing wrong? You know what? I need to work on that. You know what? I need to let my hands go more. I need to work on my angles. I need to throw more feints before I throw that shot. Sometimes faint back away. Make them come in. Bam. Catch them. You know, if you can't do that, and you're just going to make excuses for why you lost, you won't get better. You won't get better. 
Because every other excuse, every other thing, every excuse will be a reason as to why you lost other than he was just a better man. You know, maybe I do have another gear that I'm not getting into. But you have to be honest with yourself. You can't keep looking. Remember how Keith Thurman was always saying, he's always saying, you guys still haven't seen the, the best Keith Thurman yet. Bro, you already 30, like 30 years old. Wait, well, I mean, how how much longer? How many, wait, when is, when is this best Keith Thurman going to come out? What, what, is, what, does what, all the years in your career build up to one fight to say, oh, that night he was unbeatable? No, man, like, when is this best Keith Thurman going to come out? You know, the, all of these things that fighters say, you know, because you like the fighter, you want the fighter to win. People make excuses and see, he said this and that, and he said this and this and that. I'm telling you, watch when they fight, he's going to do it. Yeah, how many times have we been pushing? We're always behind Adrian Broner to win, but when he gets up and fight the top fighters, the elite fighters, he loses. So I don't know how to feel about this. I, I mean, even if he fights a meatball and look good, I still can't get excited about it because I know how it goes. You fight meatballs, you 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 look good, you win. You finally get in there with another top elite fighter, you get beat. And the thing is, when he loses, he clearly gets blown out. It's not like, yo, that was a great fight. It's like he gets blown out. He loses unanimous decisions. He just, he, just, he gets blown out. So to, to really get excited about, especially when he's fighting someone who hasn't even been announced, so you know it's not a popular fighter. So at the end of the day, we'll see what happens when Adrian comes back. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say on this video. I will catch y'all on the next one.